Kung Fu Panda 2. Poe was going for a new record. The Furious Five cheered him on as Poe crammed one bean bun after another into his mouth. Finally, Crane slapped him on the back, and all forty bean buns shot across the room. Oh, Master Shifu, Poe remembered. Gotta go see you later! During Poe's training session, Master Shifu reached up and caught a drop of water as it fell. With swift and gentle motions, he guided the unbroken drop from above his head down onto a small plant. Whoa! <laughs> awesome! said Poe. How did you do that? The secret was inner peace. Shifu warned that the path to it often leads through great pain and suffering. But Poe was focused on the water drop trick. So that's it? I just need inner peace? Poe asked. My innards are already super, super peaceful, so all I need to do is just get this thing going. Inner peace? You're going down! Suddenly, Tigress interrupted them. Poe! She called. Bandits, approaching the musician's village. Poe was ready. Tell those musicians to start playing some action music because it is on. Don't worry, Shifu. I'll master inner peace as soon as I get back. Wolves were ransacking the village, stealing every piece of metal they could find. As Poe and the Five leapt into action, a red eye symbol on Boss Wolf's shoulder distracted Poe. He froze, blinded by a vision of his past. Poe saw his mother and himself as a baby. Seizing his chance, the wolf knocked Poe down and escaped with the loot. Poe went straight to Mr. Ping from the battle. Um, Dad. Poe faltered. How do I say this? Where did I come from? After stammering something about baby geese coming from eggs, Mr. Ping finally admitted that Poe was adopted. Long ago, Mr. Ping had found Poe among the vegetables delivered to his store, a baby panda in a radish basket. There was no note, and no one had come looking for him, so Mr. Ping had decided to raise Poe as his own son. Mr. Ping smiled and wiped his eyes, remembering. But Poe was frustrated. That's it? That can't be it. There's got to be more, Dad. Mr. Ping was worried. He said Poe's story might not have had a happy beginning, but it had turned out well. I know, Poe said. I just have so many questions. Poe didn't know it, but a figure from his mysterious past had just reappeared. The evil peacock, Lord Shen, stood before the palace in Gongmen City. Shen had been banished from his ancestral home years ago. It was now under the protection of the Kung Fu Masters. Master Rhino refused to let Shen in. <laughs> I'm so glad you feel that way, the peacock said. Otherwise I'd have dragged that here for nothing. The metal his wolves had stolen was now forged into an enormous dragon-shaped cannon. Shen lit the fuse, and Master Rhino was gone. When Shifu heard the news, he sent Po and the Furious Five to bring Shen to justice. No snack stops this time, said Tigress. Po laughed. <laughs> snack stops. <sighs> Wait, are you serious? Poe and the Five raced across China over mountains, rivers, and deserts. Finally, they arrived in Gongmen City. They saw Shen's palace in the distance, but the streets were full of wolf guards. We need to get to that tower without being spotted by those wolves, said Tigress. Got it, Poe answered. Stealth mode. Poe and the Five hid inside a giant dragon costume and threaded their way through the crowds. Wolf soldiers were harassing the citizens. Poe couldn't help himself. He had to rescue a helpless rice seller. Soon, the wolves were onto them. 
the wolf leader who had beaten Poe in the musician's village, appeared with a troop of soldiers. Boss Wolf raced toward the palace in a rickshaw, but Poe was right on his tail. You! You're mine! Poe growled. Poe and Boss Wolf grappled on the back of a careening rickshaw. Poe forced the wolf's head into the path of a string of hanging signs. But then it was his own turn. Why aren't there so many signs? Poe gasped. The rickshaw soared into the air and plummeted downward. Poe got the best of Boss Wolf and squashed him spectacularly as they hit the ground in a cloud of dust. Yes! Taste the defeat! Poe crowed. Let me tell you something. Next time you mess with a panda, you better bring a whole ah. He trailed off. As the dust settled, Poe and the Five saw that they had landed at the palace gates and were surrounded by the wolf army. Poe immediately surrendered. As the wolves snapped cuffs over Poe's wrists, Tigris whispered, Poe, what are you doing? But Poe just gazed to the top of the high tower where he would meet Shen. Ah, my old enemy. Stairs. In the tower, Shen argued with a fortune teller. Soothsayer would not change the prediction she had made years before that Shen would be defeated by a warrior of black and white. Shen was angry, but he tried to laugh it off. After all, the last panda was now being brought to him in chains. As Shen prepared to fire his deadly cannon at Poe and the Five, Viper secretly picked the locks on their handcuffs. Just in time, Tigris kicked the cannon. Poe turned towards Shen, and the red eye on the peacock's feathers paralyzed Poe, with another vision of the day he lost his parents. You... you were there, Poe gasped. Yes, yes I was, said Shen. Then he leapt off the balcony and escaped. From the fireworks factory, Shen aimed rows and rows of cannons at the palace. Fire! He commanded. The tower was hit over and over. It started to collapse. Tigris rallied the others. The only way out is up, she called. They raced upward, and as the tower fell, they leapt from its top and escaped into the city. When they reached safety, Tigris was furious with Poe. Poe, the truth. You had Shen. What happened? He was there, okay? The peacock was there the last time I saw my parents. He knows what happened, where I came from, who I am, Poe said. Tigress hugged Poe, but she left him behind as the five left to stop Shen. The furious five followed Shen to the fireworks factory, where he was mobilizing his forces. But just as the five were about to bring down the roof, they saw Poe confronting Shen. Yes, I was there, said Shen. Yes, I watched as your parents abandoned you. It's a terrible thing. I believe it went something like this. Shen fired a huge cannon, and Poe was blown out of the building into the river below. Poe awoke in the cottage where he was born. Soothsayer had bandaged his wounds, but the memories that flooded back to him were far more painful. He saw his village attacked by Shen, his mother hiding him in a radish basket, and her tearful goodbyes before she led the wolves away from her baby. As the memories washed over Poe, he discovered inner peace. Poe reached up for a falling raindrop. With swift kung fu motions, he guided it unbroken to the ground, just as Master Shifu had done. Back in Gongmen's city, the Furious Five had been captured and were chained in front of Shen's cannons. Then Poe appeared. Dodging between the deadly weapons so the wolves couldn't fire without hitting each other, Poe freed his friends. Suddenly, Shifu and the other masters joined the fight. Together, they blocked the entrance to the harbor so Shen's armada could not escape. And together, they wreaked havoc on his forces. Desperate, Shen fired a mighty cannon blast that blew away the blockade and everyone on it. 
Now nothing stood in Shen's way except Po. Alone, he faced the great fleet. Shen fired, but Po imagined the cannonball as a raindrop. He reached out and guided it harmlessly into the water. Shen's wolves fired again and again, but Po deflected the cannonballs back, taking out the ships one by one. Keep firing! Keep firing! Shen yelled, but it was too late. The last cannon went off, and Po sent the ball hurtling right back at Shen's own ship. In his fury, Shen accidentally pulled the remains of the great cannon down on himself. A spark ignited the powder, and Shen's boat exploded in a glory of fireworks. The citizens of Gongmen City cheered as beautiful lights filled the sky over the harbor. As soon as he returned to the valley, Po went to Mr. Ping's restaurant. While I was gone, I found the village where I was born, he said. I found out how I ended up in that radish basket. I know who I am. Mr. Ping looked nervous, but Poe swept him into a huge hug. I'm your son, he said. I love you, Dad. Mr. Ping hugged him back. He had never been happier or prouder of his panda son. See you next time!